when you, Clay, Wiggs, Jordan would all be productive on offense. This what you were visualizing because it really hadn't happened where all four of you guys were doing something like this in a game this season. Yeah, I mean, it's just making adjustments based on how we're being defended. Um, obviously, Clay, you know, turning the volume up in terms of his shooting and um, decision making on offense. Jordan, um, just being aggressive. That's all we want him to do: be aggressive. We we'll live with. Uh, you know, the results of him putting pressure on the defense. Obviously, Wiggs shooting the ball at a high level. I think we have a little bit more clarity on how we connect defense and offense, and then everybody starts to get shots, and the flow of the game is a lot better. So it all goes <clears throat> it all goes together in terms of just making the right simple play. And then, you know, usually the ball is going to find the open guy, and we have a lot of confidence in whoever that is. We've talked in the past 20 games has kind of been like that benchmark where you can start I'm not making conclusive, you know, thoughts about teams, but it's it's when you can start kind of seeing what teams are. Do you think that that's still the case? And just what's your assessment of your team 20 games in? I wish we could play all our games at Chase Center. <laughs> no, but uh, <clears throat> I think. It's kind of, you know, we know what we can't do um, in terms of the first, what was it, eight road games and uh, just that pocket of the season where we just couldn't put a string of games together. We have a great opportunity coming up on the road with these two games coming up. <clears throat> um, but rotations seem a little bit more consistent on a nightly basis. I think, again, it's all about uh, guys understanding their roles, what they're asked to do, and then getting reps to do those things. And, um, you know, we go 10 deep right now uh, for the most part, and everybody's filling a specific role and playing hard and playing smart and, you know, moving in the right direction. So. Yes and no. I think I'm talking around it. Yes and no. It's 20 games. You know, we're glad to be 500 and looking to try to continue to build momentum. But these last five, six games have felt a lot better, um, and we want to kind of bottle that up and and keep doing it. Talk about the rotations. Obviously, Steve made the move to Draymond with that second unit, which means you and him aren't playing as much together. You're playing some, but you're not playing as much. Is that a little different for you? And at this point, are you maybe you more comfortable with it? Both of you are more comfortable with it maybe in the past because you're so established or because you know you can control the flow maybe even if one of you is out of the game? Yeah. Um, I, I think we both feel comfortable. He he talked about it last game. He understands what he needs to do and how he needs to play to uh, manage those second unit minutes and give us a good – you know, run when I'm on the bench, and then I know certain play calls to go uh, to keep things as simple as possible, knowing that, you know, the chaotic offense that we usually run when he's out there, you can still run it, but you got to kind of read the flow of the game, you know, into that first quarter, into the third quarter, just to understand how we can just create good shots. Tonight, we almost dumbed it down to just being a pick and roll type. You know, offense when he's off the floor, which is fine because we can still create enough. And Jermichael had some some great uh, possessions in the post on rolls or you know swinging it and causing chaos that way off of a pick and roll. So you know we'll figure that out as we go. But if ball in my hands, I just got to be able to make those adjustments and understand when he's out there and when he's not. There is a little difference for sure. Steph, how would you assess um, Draymond's play first twenty games? He's been amazing. Uh, looks body looks good. He's flying up and down the court. You know, he's finding his voice in terms of being able to, you know, whoever he's out there, kind of be a quarterback on defense like he usually is. And uh, you can see him even offensively. He'd be a lot more aggressive, uh, you know, finishing at the rim, shooting shots when he's open, just trying to make the right play. I think – the way he's moving and just the way he's flying up and down the court, pushing in transition and all that, that's always a good sign in terms of, you know, where he's at 
to be able to be a defensive presence that he is and still push the pace like that because nobody can really do it like him. You joked about you know, wish every game was at Chase Center, and clearly you've been tremendous at Chase. Uh, but this team has taken a lot of pride, obviously, in winning games on the road, obviously in the postseason, but even before that uh, in the regular season. How much of your pride is a little wounded by what's happened to start the season? How much are you determined to make sure that turns around? I mean, it was a weird, it's still been a weird feeling only winning one game and not, you know, taking advantage of certain games we felt like we should have won. But we had a lot of other issues we were dealing with at the same time in terms of, you know, rotations, who's playing on a nightly basis, how coach was kind of managing that. So I think, you know, these next however many, this this, next, this trip and then the East Coast trip will be a great kind of test to see where we are. I don't think anybody's in their feelings about the record. It's just you understand if we're going to, climb up the the standings towards the halfway mark of the season we're gonna have to start winning some road games and put together uh a much better effort but i feel like we've what we've done the last you know again five or six games and understand again who's playing you know certain minutes and how the flow of the game's going that give us a better chance when things can kind of get a little uh scattered on on the road and you got to be able to settle yourself down so that'll help uh for sure Steve said pregame that you told him you've gained 15 pounds since I think it was since your unanimous MVP season. Uh, is that the number? Yeah. Uh, how? I mean, I'm sure that wasn't a one-year thing. That was a gradual gain, but just a lot of good Aisha's cooking right there. <laughs> how? Uh, how? How is that? You know, we've talked to you about this previously, but how has that really kind of helped your game? Just the, the added muscle. Just taking on, you know, physical defenses, uh, and even defensively being able to take, you know, certain blows, guard bigger guys, and not get knocked around. And you, uh, with the added strength, it, I've kept my endurance where it goes hand in hand. So, even 14 years in playing, 34, whatever, 35, like hard minutes, I feel great and can recover pretty quickly knowing I'm not getting bumped and bruised like I used to. So it uh, it helps all the way around and just gives you a lot more confidence to get in the fight, um, you know, every every play that you're out there. Have you looked at, like, kind of like before and after type pictures? I mean, do you... Some... No, I have, no, I don't have uh, too much obsession over it. It's just knowing I've really invested in that part of the game and that's going to help me, you know, for the longevity part of what I want to do in this league and hopefully keep playing at a very high level for a long time. This was a while ago. Speaking about that, in the Phoenix game, there was some... You were matched up against Aiton, of all people, and in the post, you remember that play didn't go through you. He didn't go. He, he kind of faded away a little bit. Do you remember that? And do you take some pride in that's happening now? You know, those kind of plays are happening. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just hopefully could make my presence felt. I don't know if he felt intimidated at all, but uh, yeah. Try to back me down if you want to. Let's go. Hey, Steph, uh, do you feel like the third quarter kind of illustrated how Clay's mindset has changed the past few games and he didn't try to force his <laughs> shots, he, should, he kind of just let it come to him? Yeah, I mean, the early part of the game, that's why I said some pe- way people are, or the way teams are guarding us, especially these last three games, he's been, he's been hot. They're not leaving his body, and so it's kind of hard to get clean looks when you know they're just going to try to take a, you know his three away. But over the course of the game, if he keeps making the right play, he keeps staying patient, the game's going to come back to him. And then Clay's confidence never wavers in terms of being a knockdown shots. Uh, I think he was like one for five or something in the first half. Like that's not a lot of attempts, but he still stayed in it mentally and was ready for whenever the game went his way. And that's that's huge just to stay locked in and not press and force and think you know. Not getting that many attempts in the first half is kind of going to stay that way the rest of the game. He stayed ready and helps us so much when he's locked in like that. Great. <clears throat>